Um, we now, in this paradoxical situation, when we have the most sophisticated information technology in history, and people can't talk to each other. Let's hold that thought, because the fear of falling behind drives much of what comes next. I think I mean, the, the key question is really all about speed and all about time. And you know, I, I, in my profession, I'm a historian, but I think history is not the study of the past. History is the study of change, how things change. And at present, things are changing at a faster rate than in any previous time in human history. And for me, that's the main problem. I don't think that AI necessarily is a bad technology. It uh, can be the most positive technology that humans have ever created. But the thing is that AI moves, it's an inorganic thing, it's an inorganic entity, it moves at an inorganic speed, and humans are organic beings, and we move much, much, much slower in comparison. Humans are extremely adaptable animals, but we need time to adapt. And um, that's, that's the main requirement from how to deal effectively, positively with the AI revolution, give us time. And when you talk with the people leading the revolution, most of them, uh, maybe after an hour or two of discussion, they generally say, yes, it would be a good idea to slow down and to give humans a bit more time, but we cannot slow down because we are the good guys and we want to slow down, but our competitors will not slow down. Our competitors either here in another corporation or across the ocean in another nation. And you talk to the competitors, they say the same thing. We would like to slow down, but we can't trust the others. And I think the key paradox of the whole AI revolution is that you have people saying we cannot trust the humans, but then they say, but we think we would be able to trust the AIs. Because when you raise then the issue of, of how can we trust these new intelligences that we are creating, they say, oh, we think we can figure that out. History shows us that revolutionary technologies rarely bring a straight path to paradise. Harari turns to the Industrial Revolution to show how new powers spark terrible experiments before we find balance. Um, we now, in this paradoxical situation, when we have the most sophisticated information technology in history, and people can't talk to each other, and certainly can't listen, it's becoming very difficult to hold a rational conversation. Uh, you see it now in the US between Republicans and Democrats, and you have all these explanations, oh, it's because of US society and economics and globalization, whatever. But you go to almost every other democracy in the world, in my home country in Israel, you go to France, you go to Brazil, it's the same. The, it's not the unique conditions of this or that country, it's the underlying technology that makes it almost impossible for people to have a conversation. Democracy is a conversation, and the technology is destroying the ability to have a conversation. Now, is it worth it to, to, that we have, okay, we get these benefits, but we lose democracy all over the world? And then this technology is in the hand of authoritarian regimes that can use it to create the worst totalitarian regimes, the worst dystopias in human history. Um, so we have to balance the potential benefits with the potential threats and um, move more carefully. Person, And there are people who uh, are forming real relationships, sometimes even ones that mimic, um, you know, interpersonal romantic relationships mm -hmm. with AI chatbots. So, so how do you think we're doing on that and why is it important? Well, I think that there is a question about specific regulations and then there is a question about institutions. So. Um, there are some regulations that should be uh, uh, enforced as soon as possible. Uh, one of them is that uh, to ban counterfeit humans, no fake humans. We've seen this pattern before. Powerful tools, disastrous trials. Let's keep this in mind as we move forward. What is really happening with the AI revolution? I mean, almost all the knowledge is in the hands of a few companies in two or, or very few states. So even if you're a government of a country, like, I don't know, like Colombia or Egypt or Bangladesh, how do you know 
to separate the hype from the reality, what is really happening, what are the potential threats to our country. We need an international institution, again, which is not even regulatory. It's just there to understand what is happening and tell people all over the world so that they can join the conversation because the conversation is also about their fate. You now think beyond mere gadgets. AI influences our very conversations, our trust in each other. Democracy depends on knowing who we're speaking to and what's real. And without that, what's left? Especially when it comes to the survival of, the, of democracy, you, you have this kind of misunderstanding that there is somehow a kind of contradiction between them, when in fact the same way that democracy is built on top of information technology, it's also built on top of the existence of a national community. And without a national community, almost no democracy can survive. Yeah. Um, and again, when I think about nationalism, so it, what is the meaning of the word? Too many people in the world think associated with hatred. That nationalism means hating foreigners. That to be a patriot, it means that you hate people in other countries, you hate minorities and so forth. But no, patriotism and nationalism, they, sh they should be about love, about care that uh, they are about caring about your compatriots. The fear is that AI doesn't just reshape markets, it reshapes our capacity to trust each other, eroding the foundation of free societies. So what do we do? We can't just rely on corporate promises or naive optimism. Harari calls for institutions that understand and guide AI, an immune system for humanity's future. We must learn from history. Last time, we made catastrophic experiments before stabilizing. This time, can we do better by building oversight first? If we manage this well, we can slow the arms race, preserve trust, and harness AI's power for good. It's not about stopping progress, it's about guiding it. We open with the fear that no one can slow down. But if we recognize that trust and cooperation are as vital as code and capital, we can break free from this arms race. No fake humans, no blind sprints, just a deliberate, human-led path forward.